Hey church, today I want to share something that jumped out at me at my devotions recently. Philippians 3 verse 1, and it's a familiar passage. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to me, and it is a safeguard for you. Beware of the evil workers, the dogs, the false circumcision. Paul here is saying something. He tells them, rejoice in the Lord. And it sounds like he constantly said this. They were probably saying, this guy's a broken record. He's always talking about rejoicing in the Lord. And Paul says, I'm saying it again. He says, it's no problem for me to say it again. It's a safeguard for you. I was intrigued by that. Philippians, as you know, is a book of rejoicing. Paul is always saying rejoice. You can find that word joy over and over and over again. Why should we rejoice in the Lord? Well, it's not necessarily because everything's going well. Paul here is writing from jail. He most likely has a Roman soldier chained to him on each side. He's living probably in a dungeon. It's not the best spot in the world. Uh, eating sparingly. So it doesn't mean everything's going good for you. Someone asked me last week, is everything going good for you? And I thought about it and I said, I, I can't think of a day in my life when everything goes good. There's always days, there's, there's always things going good and some things not going good. So Paul isn't saying rejoice in the Lord because th things are going good for you. And I don't think he's saying rejoice in the Lord because you feel like it. Sometimes, I don't know about you, but I feel like rejoicing in God. Sometimes I don't. And our feelings come and go and aren't a really good way, a good compass for our life. But Paul is saying something profound. He's saying rejoice in the Lord because of what God has done for us. He saved us. He's given us eternal life. He's blessed us. He's a good God. These are reasons why we should rejoice in the Lord always, Paul says. So really rejoicing doesn't necessarily have anything to do with our situation or how we feel. It has everything to do with the fact that God deserves it. He's blessed us and he's good. So today, and, and Paul says, this is a safeguard for you. It'll protect you from the bad people. That's what he goes into in verse two, the evil workers, the bad people out there that if we're always rejoicing, We'll have a positive attitude. Things will go better for us. We'll feel better and we'll be happier. I read a study about people who live really old, like uh, to 95 or 100. And all, with, almost without exception, they said the number one factor is having a positive attitude. People complain a lot. People are unhappy a lot. Don't tend to live long, but people who live long tend to have a good positive attitude. So what's our word for today? Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Great, great truth. This Sunday, I hope you can be with us. There's nothing like being around other people who are rejoicing in the Lord to help you rejoice in the Lord. Hope you can be with us in person. Sunday morning, I'm excited. Teen Challenge New Jersey, uh, the men's facility is going to be with us. There'll be about a dozen guys, different ages, different backgrounds, uh, who God is helping to overcome addiction. And I'm so excited about this. I think all of us know someone whose lives, life has been affected or is being affected by addiction. Um, my own nephew died from addiction uh, a little over, I guess it was two years ago. Uh, so that's, that's a challenging thing. So I think this will really help help you if you know someone in that situation and I encourage you invite someone out the guys will be all give be giving testimony it's very inspiring I think we've had them twice or so and people always love the testimonies they'll sing they'll share a short message it, it'll be really inspiring to show that Jesus can help you overcome anything and then Sunday night we're showing the movie a thief in the night and this is the original movie, not to be confused with um, Left Behind, which wasn't half as good. Uh, a Thief in the Night is a movie you won't forget. It's a great movie. Uh, it's, it's just short, about an hour, 15 minutes. One of the first Christian movies made, and it, it tells the story of what it will be like.
for those who are left behind after the rapture. And it, it's, it's a great movie, let me just say that. If you haven't seen it, you want to see it, it'll be fun. Uh, Sunday night, 6.30, we're going to start right on time. Uh, so don't come half an hour late because it's a short movie. You'll miss a lot of it, but this will be a fun summer thing. Hope you can make it. And again, my word to you today, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice.